Hey guys, welcome back. This is gonna be week 18 of the Automotive Weekly Waveforms. Now last week, week 17, we did analog mass airflow sensors. This week we're gonna do digital mass airflow sensors. This type of sensor is really common on the GM vehicles. Um, I would say from the early 90s up until current, if it has a mass airflow sensor. So the ones that have the MAP sensor, this doesn't apply. Um, there might be a few variables out there that are running a analog mass airflow sensor. Now, the difference between an analog and a digital mass airflow sensor is an analog one is going to have kind of a linear output based off of airflow going across there. Um, on a lab scope, you're just gonna see a nice smooth line as airflow increases. If you snap throttle, you're gonna see a spike. It's gonna drop back down as that intake volume gets filled up and then it starts breathing in the air. You're gonna get a spike and then it's gonna start going up again. I should probably do that reverse for you guys like that. Well, on a digital mass airflow sensor, if we looked at it just on the voltage side, if we looked at the analog voltage of this sensor, we are going to see a zero to five volt square wave, more than likely. Um, it's been a while since I've scoped one of these, but if we snap the throttle, rev it up, we are still gonna get a zero to five volt square wave. So we kind of have to know how to decipher that and see if we're actually getting a change in that mass airflow sensor. Now, if we are scoping the mass airflow sensor, more than likely we have a signal out of range code, a stuck low code, a stuck high code, or high voltage, low voltage code. Um, if we were just diagnosing a lean running condition, this wouldn't be the test I would do. I would use the scanner data. The scanner is gonna convert all of this stuff for us into grams per second, but when you hook up the scanner and it is giving you the wrong information, or it says zero grams per second, that's when you break out the scope and actually go to the sensor. So what we need to do is we need to look at the frequency of that square wave. As the airflow increases, the frequency is going to get higher. The, the square wave is gonna get closer together. We're gonna get more cycles per second. And that is going to be our translation from how much airflow is going in to our frequency, and then the computer's gonna decipher that frequency into the grams per second. That's why we have to use a lab scope to check this. Um, I suppose you could use a DVOM and under the frequency mode and look to see what you have, and that would probably be a you know, pretty easy test to just make sure that you have a frequency output. But I'm gonna plug in the scan tool. Um, I got the Triton D10 here. I'm gonna plug it in just to grab the VIN number because I don't even know what I'm working on here other than it's a Chevy. Um, with an LS engine. And then we are gonna go into the component test meter. And once we're done with this one, I'll jump over to my laptop. We'll use the Pico scope because they're a little bit different on the way that you do that. We'll go through the component test meter first, and then I'll show you the other way without the component test meter, just going in through the lab scope. And for those of you that are new here, um, what the Automotive Weekly Waveform is, is I post up a specific test with the lab scope. Um, I normally post it up like on a Sunday or Monday. You guys have all week to attempt the test yourself on a vehicle that you're working on in the shop or your own vehicle, whatever it may be. Um, known goods normally is what we're looking for. It's best to look at known goods before known bads. And then you can post up a image of that capture, um, screenshot, video, whatever it may be up to the Facebook group or via email or for, through the Google form submission down below. Um, on Saturday night, I will do a live stream. I will review those as a group and we kind of discuss them. And it's kind of nice to see like different testing approaches from different people, uh, how they set up their scale and their time base on their scanner, where they connected. Sometimes guys have really creative ways of using their lab scopes that I don't even think about. So it's, it's kind of a fun experience. So make sure you subscribe, click the bell, you'll be notified of that live stream. And if you wanna submit stuff, either jo join the Facebook group down below or email me to the email down below. Okay, now by default, when I hook this up to the vehicle, it takes me to the scanner mode. I'm gonna hit the home button, go to guided component test, engine, and we want mass airflow sensor. Now it's gonna give us component information. We could read about this. It'll give us the pin out, what each pin does. Now this also has the intake air temp sensor in it. So if we were measuring that as well, um, things we need to watch out for is if we don't have a signal or not seeing what we expect to see, we need to check our ignition voltage in our ground. If we see if a signal that is stuck at five volts, we may be missing our ground. If it's stuck to ground, we may be missing our five volt signal or ignition one voltage. So that may be a 12 volt um, signal wire. But it tells us that the sensor is a hot wire or thin film sensor combined with an intake air temp. The current required by the mass airflow to maintain wire temp is a measure of mass airflow. 
This MAF is a frequency generator. The signal varies with intake air input, meaning the amount of air going past the sensor, the frequency is going to increase. And it tells us best test location is at the MAF, which is really easy because it's right on the air box and some other information. Now I'm gonna go back and we're gonna go to the frequency test. It's gonna tell us where to connect and what our frequency should be about. Um, so engine running warm, idle, should we, we should be 2.3 kilohertz to above three kilohertz. Now I have a cold engine, so we may be a little bit above that because we're probably gonna be idling around a thousand RPM. Um, when the key is first turned on, we're gonna see it spike and then it's gonna drop down to about 300 Hertz just sitting there with no airflow. So I'm gonna grab some leads, hook them up to the scope. We'll connect to that mass airflow. Um, it gives us a pin out A through E and luckily the mass airflow is right in the center. I'll ignore the ground. I'm gonna hook up to engine ground because um, you don't wanna try to test two wires at the same time because um, if we don't have a signal, we won't know if we don't have a ground or if we don't have an actual signal. Um, so always go from a common ground source first, either the battery or the engine block. Um, and then if you verify that this ground is good, then you can use that later on as a reference. Okay, so I said yellow wire in the center pin. I'm just gonna back probe it here. If I wanted to verify signal integrity while test driving, I may uh, run a piercing probe through there, but generally I use the back probe. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and view the meter. I wanna get this up and running before I turn the ignition on. I'm gonna go ahead and go full screen on the meter. Oh, sorry, this button up here. Uh, we have the information about what we are using. So we are on probe Hertz. Um, it is filtering. And we're on a 10 kilohertz scale threshold. Uh, I'm not sure what that one is. Okay, it says auto threshold. and we're on a five second sweep time. So let me go ahead and turn the key on. We should get some sort of uh, activity. So we saw a big spike, it leveled out, and it says right now we're sitting about 0.77 kilohertz. So this is something where that sensor may have to warm up a little bit, because I said we should be around 300 hertz uh, with the engine off. And it's also possible that that mass airflow sensor is dirty. Um, and then the, the more stuff that's on that sensor, the more current it's going to take to, uh, to heat that up. We'll go ahead and start it up. Okay, we're seeing 4.5 kilohertz or 4,500 hertz. Uh, which is much higher than what they said we'd see at idle, but on my cold idle, I'm probably around 1100 RPM right now. Um, and then if I jump in here and snap the throttle, we should see a big rise and then it'll drop down. We'll shut it off. And I'm gonna Hit the stop button here. We'll save that waveform. Now let's zoom out here on our waveform. So we can see when I first turned it on, we had a big spike over 10,000 Hertz. It dropped back down to around 700 Hertz. And then here at idle, we were sitting around 4,500 down to about uh, 4,000. Let's zoom in right over here when I snap the throttle. And remember with the snap on, we are taking a picture of that's zoomed in and then we can zoom back out. Once we zoom all the way back out, then we can pick a point to zoom back in. Okay, so here we see the big spike. That's the initial spike. Let me zoom in a little bit more of the air filling up the intake manifold. I went too far. There we go. So this spike at the beginning is the air rushing into the intake just to fill the void. Then it drops it back down and we have this ramp coming up as the engine is sucking in air on its own. And then when I let off, we have some hash here. Um, the throttle plate's closed, so we're gonna get some, some weird oscillations of our airflow. And then it settles back out as we came back down to idle. Now, 
To get to this screen without going through the guided component test meter, we have to uh, we have to not go into the lab scope here. Let me. Uh, I'm going to exit this vehicle. And see, normally you would just go to your scope multimeter, lab scope for most of our testing. But if I go to probe here, I don't have Hertz. There isn't a frequency probe in here when I'm in the lab scope. If we go back, it's actually under the graphing multimeter. Because the frequency plotter isn't something that's happening in the milliseconds, um, it's normally comparing it to a bigger time scale, like a second, how many times per second something's happening. Uh, we're gonna go in here to our graphing multimeter, which operates at a little bit slower speed. And here we have frequency. So I'll just tap on that one there. Um, channel two is off and it brought us here. Um, we're at a thousand Hertz. Our scale before was 10,000, um, which we exceeded that a little bit. And then we can adjust our time scale. They had us on a five second one, but you could drop it down to a one second scale. And that would give you a little more clarity in some of those areas. So let me jump over onto the Pico scope and I'll show you how that works. Okay, so I have the key off. Um, the Pico scope is, you know, set up in auto mode by default on my tool. I've never set presets for this. Um, I'm gonna jump this up. We'll just jump to five volts. Now I'm gonna start it up again, just to show you what you're gonna see if you just leave the settings in an analog format. And there's a couple of ways that you can calculate frequency in the Pico scope software. Uh, how much time do we want? I'm gonna say 500 milliseconds per division. That'll give us five seconds on the screen. And then we can zoom in from there. Okay, my voltage is off. Okay, so if we're looking at the PicoScope screen like this, um, it doesn't look like there's that much information there but I could stop it and we could zoom in and we could look at what that waveform looks like. Now it's still just a bunch of hash, but if we get zoomed in here enough, um, my waveform isn't very good because I had too much time on the screen and I didn't increase my sample rate, but we can kind of see what's going on. But it's kind of ugly, you know, it's not a very good waveform. We could go in here to tools, let me shut the truck off, go to tools and math channel and just do a frequency plot to see what we have and drop this down. Now that looks like a flat line as well, but it says we're at around 3000 Hertz. Let me go back to when we first turned on the vehicle and see if there is a change in that plot. Okay, we ran out of buffer space. So I'm gonna start recording again. We'll go ahead and turn the key on. We should get that big rise. And then I'm gonna start it up and we'll just go ahead and shut it back off again. Now it, it doesn't refresh this right away. And as we can see here, I need to adjust my, my math channel because my maximum frequency must be too low. Yep, I have it set at 3000 Hertz. We'll just go to uh, since we can zoom in, I can do 15,000 Hertz. Turn that back on and it'll recalculate it for us. So let's go to when we first turn the key on. And this black line is our frequency chart. So it's converting this signal into this signal. So we jumped up. When I started it, we jumped up again. Now we didn't see the huge rise right here because that mass airflow sensor is still warm. If I shut the vehicle off for 10 or 15 minutes and then turn the key on, we will get that big spike. And we could do it this way. So that, that's one way that you could do it with the Pico scope. Um, otherwise, we start recording here again. Um, I'm gonna turn off my math channel. The other way is to just go up here to your settings and we're just gonna go to frequency. We're just gonna not even look at the analog voltage at all. We're just gonna look at frequency and it says channel overage, it doesn't really know what's going on. We're probably, it's probably way down here at zero mark or something. Um, 
Let me see what we have for options. So we're gonna go zero to 20,000 Hertz, just because we know that this can get up to 10,000 Hertz. Um, we could make a custom scale, but for our testing today, that'll be fine. So I'm gonna go do, do the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and fire it up. And I'll go key on first, wait a second, and then start it and see what we get. So there's key on. Start it. I'll give it a quick snap throttle. And we'll shut it off. So there might be a, a little bit of noise in here. If I shorten my time base a little bit, that may clean up. But we can see the pattern here at the bottom of what's going on. We can measure that. We're seeing around 9,600 hertz or 9.6 kilohertz. We see this taper rising up and it drops down. I'm sure that there's a way that I can filter this more. Um, it's just, this isn't a test that I, I do often. If I looked at that, I wouldn't worry about it. I would still be able to calculate my frequency, no problem. The other method is just to measure it analog and then do a frequency math channel, which turns out to be a little bit cleaner waveform. Okay, so that's it. A couple different methods using the PicoScope, using the frequency selector instead of ACDC. I'm going to that frequency um, selection. Gave us a little bit of noise, but you know, we could do it very quickly without a math channel. Otherwise, do it as a analog voltage, use a math channel for frequency, gives us a nice clean image. Then you have both the analog waveform and the digital conversion. Snap on, we are gonna go into the graphing multimeter or the component test meter, either way. But graphing multimeter, we're gonna go to frequency. On this one, we went to 10,000 Hertz and had a nice clean waveform. If you go into the lab scope version, you can't really do much with it. You could look at the uh, waveform integrity, but it's really not gonna tell you a whole lot of what's going on unless we don't get a frequency out of it. If we don't have a frequency, then you might wanna go into the lab scope and actually look at that waveform signature and see if we actually have a square wave happening. If we don't have a square wave happening, we can look to see if it's stuck at five volts or zero volts, and that'll tell us if we have a you know, bad power or ground wire, or even if our signal wire is shorted to ground or shorted to 12 volts, that could be an indication of what's going on. Um, otherwise, component test meter is your friend. Plug in the scan tool, get the VIN from the vehicle, go to component test meter, walk through those steps, um, go to engine, pick your mass airflow sensor. You can read about it, find out what your pinout is, and jump straight to the meter. It's going to set up most of that for you. Very rarely do I have to change the settings in the component test meter if I'm doing the test how they recommend, and it gives me good results. So if you guys have any questions or comments, put those down below. I'll answer those as quick as I can. Subscribe, click the bell, submit your waveforms to the Facebook group, to my email, or the Google form down below, and I will catch you guys on Saturday for the live stream when we review the submitted waveforms. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.